we can start reading. So, yes, man. Yes. Read the uh, yeah, go ahead. This is an arrangement which puts into relation with each other the data of the spiritual intuition and the data of the reason and sense. And it opens to us a way out from their contradiction, a spiritual and practical issue. But it is not a solution. It does not resolve the contradiction. Maya is real and unreal. The world is not a mere illusion, for it exists and is real in time. But eventually and transcendentally, it turns out to be unreal. This creates an ambiguity which extends beyond itself and touches all that is not the pure self existence. Thus the Ishwara, though he is undeluded by Maya and the creator of Maya, seems himself to be a phenomenon of Brahman and not the ultimate reality. He is real only with regard to the time world he creates. The individual self has the same ambiguous character. If Maya were to cease altogether from its operation, Ishwara, the world and the individual, would no longer be there. But Maya is eternal. Ishwara and the world are eternal in time. The individual endures as long as he does not annul himself by knowledge. Our thoughts on these premises have to take refuge in the conception of an ineffable separation, supra-rational mystery, which is to the intellect insoluble. But faced with this ambiguity, this admission of an insoluble mystery at the commencement of things and at the end of the process of thought, we begin to suspect that there is a link missing. Ishwara is not himself a phenomenon of Maya. He is real. He must then be the manifestation of a truth of the transcendence. Or he must be the transcendent itself dealing with a cosmos manifested in his own being. If the world is at all real, it must also be a manifestation of the truth of the transcendence. For only that can have any reality. If the individual has the power of self-discovery, an entrance into the transcendent eternity and his liberation has so great an importance. It must be because he too is a reality of the transcendent. He has to discover himself individually because his individuality also has some truth of itself in the transcendence which is veiled from it and which it has to recover. It is an ignorance of self and world that has to be overcome and not an illumination, a figment of individuality and world existence. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, in the previous para, he has spoken about Shankara's philosophy, and Shankara's philosophy says that there are two instruments of knowledge, reason and intuition. That's what we read last time. So I'm quickly summarizing for, um, for Sunki and Shilpa, because you didn't come yesterday. He says that... <coughs> Shankara's philosophy is magnificently put, okay? He is very, very, he says that the problem is put in such a way that the world is not unreal. But when you are in the lower world of the physical world, you are using reason as your instrument of knowledge. When we look at the world, we use reason to understand everything. And that's perfectly valid in the lower world, the lower hemisphere. But when you go to the higher hemisphere, who is the we? Who is the you? Your consciousness. Your consciousness rises to the higher level of consciousness, okay, into the upper hemisphere. And you see that reason is an instrument which is useless. You can't, <laughs> it does not give you any knowledge at all. In fact, it doesn't even exist. There is no reason there. <laughs> okay, in one place he says that as soon as you cross beyond the mind, the reason is like a guide and it's like the border between Pakistan and India. So long as you are in India, reason is the guide and it takes you up to the border and says, now you have to go into another territory and I can't take you there. My guide, I can't go into that territory. I am not now, you are on your own. Okay. And when you cross the border, 
then another guide comes and that guide is the intuition that's the higher uh, the image of pakistan and uh, <laughs> india is very bad <laughs> because pakistan has got all sorts of suggestions but take any uh, two countries with a border okay that is a better <laughs> better image so this is what he is saying shankara's philosophy higher level intuition is the <clears throat> instrument of knowledge and there the physical world is real but you have to understand it through intuition when you are in the lower intuition is of no use at all okay shankara so does not agree with that he says intuition is here because you see the phenomenon of um, uh, animals they have instincts and what is instinct it is nothing but intuition coming down into the lower levels of consciousness and guiding you from behind the screen so intuition does come down into the lower but shankara says no it is there in the higher levels intuition is the only instrument and it's useless in the lower instruments to a certain extent it is true because intuition does not come very easily but it can come like it came for for instance einstein it came for those who discovered many drugs okay you get a glint of knowledge and then you develop that and you discover something but in the physical world the intuition is not full at all it is partial but even then it can come in so that's the difference between sridhando and shankara shankara says the two worlds are different both are real in the lower world reason is the instrument and the higher world intuition is the instrument but sridhando says that's fine that explains the reality and the unreality of the world okay that he explains then now he is saying but still it does not give very full satisfaction so what we have read today we will start reading but before that i will just read out the summary okay of what he has said and making it i am reading the summary quickly and then we'll go into each sentence in shankara's philosophy the spiritual intuitions realization of the transcendence and the rational mind's experience of the world as real are placed side by side both being asserted as real mayavada says the world is unreal shankara says no both are real but you have to use different instruments of knowledge yesterday we um, uh, used another image to understand this in the lower level when you want to see the subatomic particles you use an electronic microscope okay that's the instrument that you have to use you are in the lower world but when you want to you are an astronomer and you want to see the largest stars in the universe the microscope is absolutely no use at all you have to use a telescope different so the telescope is the intuition in the higher world and the microscope is the reason in the lower world okay so that's shankara sir therefore maya is real in the world and becomes unreal in the transcendence this shankara sir this ambiguity affects everything that is not the pure existent transcendence only when you go to the pure existent transcendence this dichotomy between the two affects everything that's why shankara says in the level 2 the spiritual planes of consciousness purusha and prakriti consciousness and force are always separate they are together but they are always separate they may act together but they are two not one okay and simply saying at the highest level they may be that that problem is not there now we will read the summary of what we have read today we have then the ishvara that's a third level who creates maya of the world but remains unaffected by his own magic so, maya is the magic why is it a magic because the formless becomes form because the one becomes the many okay that's why it's a magic how does it happen we don't know but ishvara seems to be a phenomenon of brahman and is not the supreme reality why because he is capable of producing maya which is um, it creates unreality so this ishvara is um, capable of creating unreality therefore you have to re examine the question that's what shrimp is saying he seems to be a phenomenon of brahman remember brahman is level 2 okay and is not the supreme reality who ishvara if you uh, start from the shankaran philosophy 
under these premises we have to conclude that if maya disappears then ishvara world and individual also all vanish into non existence we then have to admit a supra rational mystery so you have to say that yes it is true that i cannot explain how this happens okay but shrinde is not satisfied with that he says that we should be able to explain okay in whatever terms so just one second all right i am not getting so we'll go and read each sentence now this is an arrangement which puts i am reading the first sentence this is an arrangement which puts into relation with each other the data of the spiritual intuition and the data of the reason and sense and it opens to us a way out of their contradiction a spiritual and practical issue the spiritual issue is up and the practical issue is down but it is not a solution it does not resolve the contradiction sentence of four lines five lines 1 2 3 4 five lines so i'll go step by step this is an arrangement what arrangement is he talking about he is talking of the shankaran philosophy and what is that there is a lower world and there is a higher world both are real okay he denies the buddhistic philosophy and he denies the mayavadic philosophy shankara he says both are real but they are to be experienced in a different way in the lower reason in the higher intuition and intuition does not work in the lower and the reason does not work in the higher okay so this is fine that because that's exactly what you get in spiritual experience <laughs> okay this is what is this is the arrangement which puts into relation with each other the higher and the lower okay the data of the spiritual intuition spiritual intuition higher level and the data of the reason and sense lower level so both are real and there is a relation between them and it opens to us a way out of their contradiction the contrad they are not opposites they are two different things altogether they are not opposites okay a spiritual and a practical issue a spiritual <coughs> paramarthika satta paramarthika the supreme truth and the practical issue vyavaharika satta these are the words that shankara uses okay practical and spiritual but according to sri ramdo this is not a solution because the ultimate reality is twofold i don't think that's possible how can it be it should be that it should be only one because we are starting from the advaita philosophy okay so but it's not a solution it does not resolve the contradiction you may say that there is no contradiction but you are seeing two things and you are saying that both instruments of knowledge do differ so there is some sort of contradiction maya is real why because the, when you go to the higher level the physical world disappears so maya is real and unreal at the same time it is real at the lower level and it's unreal at the higher level okay the world is not a mere illusion for it exists and is real in time so long as you are in time and space the world is absolutely real to you no one can say that i am seeing the unreality okay if you are in the normal rational mind but eventually and transcendently it turns out to be unreal when you take your consciousness out of the body mind life and into the higher mind there you see the physical world is unreal so there is a some sort of contradiction is there but eventually and transcendently it turns out to be unreal this creates an ambiguity which extends beyond itself and touches all that is not the pure self existence the pure self existence is satchid ananda at the highest level okay and there everything below that level there is a problem in fact for sirim do when he reached even the the over mind level okay these are all sirim do's words higher mind living mind intuitive mind and over mind even there he is seeing that purusha and prakriti 
consciousness and force both are there but they don't seem to be one they are two okay this is so this is what the problem that he is talking about here even in the spiritual levels of consciousness they are not one they are two maybe you can get a glimpse of the oneness but you don't experience it permanently that's what you have to understand this creates an ambiguity which extends beyond itself and touches all that is not the pure self existence thus the ishvara though he is undiluted by maya and the creator of maya seems himself to be a phenomenon of brahman because he is creating the world and there this seems to be real but you go to another level it seems to be unreal so he is the creator of maya and therefore He, in him also there is a, a double thing so that how to solve that problem seems himself to be a phenomenon of brahman and not the ultimate reality so the ultimate reality you will find at the third level that's what said they were saying he is real only with regard to the time world that he creates the individual self has the same ambiguous character so now we'll discuss a little bit of the individual self there is a true individuality which is infinite but in the physical world are you realizing your individuality or are you experiencing the ego <laughs> you are experiencing the ego you are the grain of salt you are not the grain of salt which has dissolved into the ocean and the saltiness is everywhere you are not that is a pure individuality that's a unlimited individuality which is devoid of ego but in the lower levels of consciousness you me everybody i am assuming that <laughs> we are all real individuality is superimposed by the egoistic consciousness but when you your consciousness rises and goes into the higher mind level the ego drops off the covering drops off it's like a, a fruit okay take the coconut okay <laughs> the coconut has a covering thick covering and you don't know what's inside but as soon as you go to the higher mind the covering comes off and the real stuff inside the fruit is available to you okay so there you see that the covering was unreal it is limiting it is not allowing you to see the truth okay So that's what he is saying. Okay. So, <clears throat> the Ishvara, though he is undiluted by Maya and the creator of Maya, seems himself to be a phenomenon of Brahman and not the ultimate reality in the second level of the spiritual planes of consciousness. He is real only with regard to the time world he creates. The individual self has the same ambiguous character. Why? Because the ego and the individuality. are mixed they are superimposed one on the other if maya were to cease altogether from its operations okay ishvara the world and the individual would no longer be there that's what happens in buddhism okay if maya were to cease altogether from its operations ishvara the world and the individual everything becomes that's why they use the word nihil okay nothing exists it's absolutely a blankness but you are you are free you are liberated from the appearances of the world if maya were to cease altogether from its operations ishvara the world and maya the three levels na no? all the three levels would no longer be there but maya is eternal the physical world doesn't disappear another person is going on experiencing it even you experience it even when you go into the higher level of consciousness it doesn't disappear the world doesn't disappear ishvar and the world are eternal in time the individual endures so long as he does not annul himself by knowledge what is meant by knowledge rising to the higher level of consciousness and getting rid of your ignorance and what is the ignorance the covering the outer layer of the real fruit okay that's the cover that you get rid of then you the individual endures okay so so when you use the word individual here in the uh, buddhistic sense that your individuality your 
clear limited form size weight color race determined by language and the conditions of your birth this individuality okay, with all the features that disappears when you go to the higher level of consciousness so if he annuls himself what is he annulling himself the form and he goes into the formless which is a true individuality our thought on these premises our thought that means we are saying now on these premises what are the premises there are two worlds a lower world and a higher world with different instruments there is a premise so what do we have to do since so is saying our thought on these premises has to take refuge in the conception of an ineffable supra rational mystery which is to the intellect insoluble so if you agree with shankara's philosophy the world is not you cannot explain the mystery it is anir vachaniya it cannot be put into words it is ineffable if you want to use the english word can't be put into words it's a supra rational mystery right reason cannot understand which is the to the intellect insoluble remember reason cannot go to the higher level of consciousness it dissolves and disappears okay so that but now say we speak but faced with this ambiguity this admission of an insoluble mystery at the commencement of things and at the end of the process of thought so which is the end of the process of thought when you enter into the lowest level of the spiritual plane of consciousness higher mind okay that's the end of the process of thought we begin to suspect that there is a link missing somewhere this is from the speaking how can it be that there is a two fold we started with the advaita philosophy so it cannot be the ultimate there must be something else so something is missing and what is that missing element the super mind when you go to the super mind the problem gets completely solved they are the divine is there everywhere okay even intuition is available in the lower level <laughs> okay shankara is saying it's not available at the lower level so he is saying yes the divine is here also but he has covered himself up but he is available in the lower level okay that's the difference between shankara and sri arjuna <clears throat> ishwara is not himself a phenomenon of maya he is real then the manifestation of a truth of the transcendence or he must be the transcendent itself dealing with the cosmos manifested in his own being he has created the world but he has not created it outside himself he has created it within himself if the world is at all real it must also be the manifestation of a truth of the transcendence for as he has said elsewhere if the gold is real the ornaments made of gold how can they not be real that's what he is saying if the world is real at all it must also be the manifestation of a truth of the transcendence okay <coughs> this is what he said in uh, another place na if the gold is real the in the uh, the ornaments necklace rings ear nose ring ear rings necklace all these things are also real that's what is this real world the forms it has also be the manifestation of a truth of the transcendent for only that can have any reality is the gold that is real the forms of the um, the of the gold can be melted down and can be changed so they are changeable but gold is eternal that's what he is saying if the individual has the power of self discovery and entrance into the transcendent eternity and his liberation has so great an importance everybody admits even those who say mayavada Uh, the buddhist everybody says the jains that liberation is the most important thing and what is liberation the individual soul escapes from the prison house of the lower creation of the lower body mind life that is the liberation and it's got a huge importance so important that in india for thousands of years that was the only aim of life it must be because he too is a reality of the transcendence 
he has to discover who is the he, the individual soul. He has to discover himself individually because his individuality also has some truth of itself in the transcendence, which is veiled from him and which has to be discovered. It's an ignorance of self and world that has to be overcome and not an illusion, a figment of individuality and world existence. So, Sivam the solution, the world and the spirit, okay, if you want, they are both real, but they are, it cannot be an illusion. It is your knowledge that is the problem. Okay. If you remember, he started this whole discussion with three concepts. The knower, the to be known, and the process of knowledge, that connection. So, <coughs> Shankara is saying, the knower is real, the known, to be known is real, it is knowledge that goes on changing from one level to another level. Okay. That's what saying this. And he's saying that knowledge also is actually permanent. So this is what he has said in the... Okay. So the ignorance, the problem is not the unreality of the world, but it's the ignorance, the process of knowledge that you have to examine. And then he will... Huge discussion the uh, illusion and the unreality of the world, he will see, he will tell you why there is a twofold reality, lower and higher. Why is that? Why, why was it necessary to do that? He will explain. Okay. So, we are 8.20, we have got uh, 15 minutes. So, now we can read the next one. Yeah. It becomes uh, a great um, something. Go ahead. You know, this is regarding ignorance and intuition. Okay. Now, if one travels by road from Chandigarh to Manali and okay. then goes further north from Himachal Pradesh into Ladakh. Okay. Today, now, yeah. when you are in Himachal Pradesh, you have a Himachal Pradesh driver. Okay. The, the moment you cross the border, the driver has to change, the vehicle has to change, and now you have to go into a Ladakh registered car and a Ladakhi driver. Ah. So you see, it is like Himachal territory, which is ruled by reason, and the higher up you go, it now becomes a different driver, different vehicle, and in future. Very good. That's exactly what he said. Exactly. So, when we give images to ourselves, it becomes very easy to understand. Okay? That's exactly, that's perfect. You have put it in a different way, and I put it in a different way, but it's essentially, that's a reality. Okay? So, now we read the next one. It becomes evident. So, who will read? Sunki, yesterday you were not there, today you read. <laughs> yes, I will read. Okay, go ahead. It becomes evident. It becomes evident that as the transcendent is a suprarational and seizable only by an intuitive experience and realization, so also the mystery of the universe is, is, is a suprarational. It has to be so since it is a phenomenon of the transcendent reality and it would not, if it, if it were otherwise, be insoluble by the intellectual reason. But if so, we have to pass beyond the intellect in order to reach the gulf and, and penetrate the mystery. To live on unsolved and not be the final solution. It is the intellectual reason that provides, that crystallizes and perpetuates on apparent contradiction by creating its opposite or dividing, con dividing concepts of the Brahman, the self, the Ishvara, the individual being, the supreme consciousness, or superconscious, and the uh, and the Maik word consciousness. If the Brahman alone exists, all these must be Brahman. And in all Brahman consciousness, the division of these concepts must disappear in a reconciling self vision. But we can arrive at their true unity only by passing beyond the intellectual reason 
and finding out through spiritual experience where they meet and become one and what is the spiritual reality of their apparent divergence. In fact, in the Brahman consciousness, the divergences cannot exist. They must, they must by our passage into it, into it, converge into unity. The, the, the divisions of the intellectual reason may correspond to a reality, but it must be then the reality of, of a manifold oneness. The Buddha applied this penetrating rational intellect, supported by an intuitive vision to the world, as our mind and sense see it and discover the principle of its construction and the way of release from all constructions. But he, he refused to go farther. Shankara took the farther step and regarded the suprarational truth, which a Buddhist kept behind the veil as realizable, as, as realizable by cancellation of the construction of consciousness. But just spoke of discovery. Me? Is the sound okay? Uh, yeah, it's becoming weak. Okay. Uh, okay. Shankara, standing between the word and the eternal reality, saw that the mystery of the word must be ultimately suprarational, not conceivable or expressible by our reason, anir vajanya, but he maintained the word as seen by the reason and sense as valid and had therefore to posit on unreal reality because he did not take one step still farther. For to know the unre to know the unreal truth of the word, its reality, it must be seen from the suprarational awareness, from the view of the superconscious that maintains and surpasses and by, surpass by surpassing, knows it in its truth, and no longer from the view of the consciousness that is maintained by it and surpassed by it, and therefore does not know it or know it only by its appearance. It cannot be that to that self-creative supreme consciousness, the word is an incomprehensible mystery or that it is to it an illusion that is yet not altogether an illusion a reality that is yet unreal. The mystery of the universe must have a divine sense to the divine. It must have a significance or a truth of cosmic being that is luminous to the reality that up upholds it with its trans transcending and yet imminent superconscious. Yeah. Okay, so I'll do one thing. I'll read the last two sentences. I'm beginning from one... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th line from the bottom, it cannot be. Okay. I'll read from there and then we will summarize what he's saying in the para and then we will read each sentence if you feel it necessary. So, Siddhartha is saying, it cannot be that to that self-creative supreme consciousness, the world is an incomprehensible mystery. It cannot be that when you are in the higher level of consciousness, the, it, the world disappears and it's a mystery. How does it disappear? It's not like that. So you're saying it's not like that. The world is an incomprehensible mystery. It cannot be. Okay? Or that it is to it an illusion. Neither is it an illusion nor is it non-understandable. The mystery of the universe must have a divine sense to the divine. Why the divine is creating this? illusion, so-called illusion and the reality that the divine has a purpose. And what is that purpose? We have to discover. It must have a significance or a truth of cosmic being that is luminous to the reality that upholds it with its transcending and yet imminent superconscious. So there must be a problem which we are not understanding at the lower level, but if you go sufficiently high, it should be possible to understand. That's what he's saying. And in the paragraph, he's telling you very clearly that there are three levels of understanding. It's like you are in kindergarten, then you go to the uh, Vela form, that is it, the uh, first from three to six, you are in the kindergarten. At the age of six, 
you go to the alpha form you start learning the alphabet you start learning the uh, languages okay sanskrit uh, english french mostly french okay so that you learn and then after that when you are 10 years old okay you come to the school and in school you are there for 7 uh, 8 years and you get more knowledge and finally you go to knowledge from 18 to 21 so this is exactly what's happening so buddhism is at the kindergarten stage not really kindergarten because they have understood that the you can go to the higher mind then jain is saying buddha may have realized the truth but he did not speak more about it because it would confuse everybody and it did confuse everybody because they are identifying ego and individuality whereas the two are different okay so then shankara comes and goes one step more and he is far better than the buddhistic theory by you he is not condemning buddha he buddha buddha he is saying that buddhism has expressed okay it says the world is unreal shankara comes and says the world is not unreal it is real but there are two levels then swamdu says the two levels also start becoming explainable you can understand the thing if you go to the third level so why did you stop there he could have gone to the third level okay <laughs> so it's like that okay so uh, everything in the physical world there are grades na even if you take air travel okay you you in the physical world you see that birds can fly but you can't fly then you want to also fly and then you start discovering the laws of aerodynamics and then you are capable of flying okay but you are not able to fly as yet but you are capable of flying in a machine okay then <clears throat> now you are able to go not only fly but you are able to go to the moon and so, on. so there is a gradation of consciousness so this gradation is from buddhism or actually you can start from the ignorance total ignorance of man to the realization of the buddhistic philosophy then you go to the shankaran philosophy which says that there is no unreality anywhere then you go to swamdo philosophy which says not only is there no unreality but everything in the brahman don't look at it superficially go deep down and you will see that there is a gradation and a covering and that which seems to be a mystery at the lower levels becomes possible to understand at the higher level and that is a divine intention the divine is not to fool you and make you think that there is a unreality and a reality but you have to to understand what he is saying you have to understand that language and that expression and your consciousness will become sufficiently large to be able to understand that that's what he is saying okay so this is the crux so the chapter if you remember is the reality and the cosmic illusion so swam those ultimate examination of the three elements the knower the to be known and knowledge so he examines all the possibilities and finally comes to the conclusion that the problem is neither the knower nor the world nor the to be known the problem is the knowledge so knowledge and ignorance why is this gradation of knowledge from absolute ignorance to absolute knowledge why is that done? so now he shifts focus as they say in english you shift the goal post <laughs> okay you are saying the problem the problem is not the unreality of the world and the reality of the brahman it is not that but it's a problem of knowledge the consciousness that gets veiled the substance that gets denser the ananda that hides itself in the lower so why is that that's what we are going to examine further okay And that's what he has concluded okay so if you want we will go uh, next time through because we have got only 3 minutes now yeah 3 minutes and uh we can't finish what we are doing so we'll stop but essentially we have understood what he is saying he is talking about the three levels okay. there is a level 1 of ignorance 
there is a level 2 where ignorance starts becoming knowledge and there is level 3 where knowledge is complete this is the same don view so but the problem is still not solved why is it that knowledge has got three levels that's what you have to look at okay so that goes to the next actually book okay the knowledge and the ignorance and finally the evolution what the evolution is he goes in detail for the evolution so we stop here today Okay, everybody. Have a nice day.